So here's our first video on frequency distributions and their graphs. We're going to take a look at what a frequency distribution is and then look at some graphs that we can create from a frequency distribution. Looking at this slide that we have right here, this over here is called a histogram. That's one thing that we're going to look at in just a little bit is how to create a histogram. That will probably be in one of the following videos. Uh, but this over here is a frequency table and I want to let you know that sometimes this frequency table is also called a frequency distribution. So if you ever hear somebody say distribution, they could be talking about this table as well as this graph right here which is a histogram. So let's take a little bit closer look here by looking at a frequency distribution. There's a couple of different parts and one of the things that we need to create is called a class. Most of the time if we're going to create a frequency distribution we'll, we will have anywhere from 5 to 20 classes. And keep in mind that everything that we're going to be looking at is for quantitative data. Quantitative data. A, a frequency distribution for qualitative data is going to look a little bit different than a frequency distribution for quantitative data. So keep that in mind. So I've created some classes. I, my first class goes from 1 to 5 and then 6 to 10 and then 11 to 15, 16 to 20 and 21 to 25. Let's say along the way I'm collecting data and I start making tally marks and it just so happens that this is how my distribution falls. So my frequency for uh, the number of times one, my data, my data values from one to five show up is two. The number of times the data values are from six to ten is also two. The number of times the data values are from eleven to fifteen is five. 16 to 20 shows up three times and 21 to 25 shows up once. And that's how you can create a frequency distribution. Now a couple of things to keep in mind. The classes all need to be the same size. Classes must be the same size. If our classes are different sizes, then that creates a, a little bit of confusion and a little bit of deception. We don't want to deceive anybody with the graphs that we're making or the distributions that we're creating. So the classes need to be the same size <clears throat> and have the same width. We'll talk about that in a second. So there are some different parts to the classes that we want to focus on. The first part is are these first numbers over here. And these first numbers are called lower class limits. So the 1, the 1 here, the 6, the 11, the 16, the 21, those are called the lower class limits. And if those are the lower class limits, you can probably figure out what the other side is. The 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, and the 25, those are called the upper class limits. So we've got the lower class limits and the upper class limits. And again, my classes must be the same size and, or have the same class width. So let's come down here and look at what class width is. The class width is the distance between the lower limits of consecutive classes. Again, class widths are the distance between the lower limits of the consecutive classes. So if I take a look here, my lower limits are 1, 6, 11, 16, and 21. So 6 minus 1 equals 5. And then you go to the next one, 11 minus 6 equals 5. And 16 minus 11 equals 5. And 21 minus 16 equals 5. So in this case, my class width is equal to 5. You have to keep the same class width when you create your frequency distribution. 
again, if you don't do that, then you'll end up creating some deception, and we don't want to do that.